Hey, this is Spencer Shaw from the Social Traffic Lab, and today I've set up an interview with Joel, the master of disguise who's wearing the cool glasses, um, the incredible whiteboard behind him, and today we're going to be sharing some blogging tips, some tips that I have not seen other people do. And it's actually a way that I'm able to produce content and to be able to blog because it's easy. And it's totally different than what every single guru out there, there's no seven step or three step or 10 step. It's Joel's crazy brain coming from uh, understanding how this blogging world works, working with best selling authors. And we're going to share those tips with you today. So um, I'm going to pass the torch over to Joel. And uh, besides being the dude that's, uh, you know, rocking the nerd glasses, he comes from a family of 13 kids. And we were talking earlier, um, your wife pops zits for a living, is that right? She's a uh, PA uh, in dermatology, uh, but that's another way to say it. Doesn't that sound better? There we go. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know about better. <laughs> More um, vivid, for sure. There we go. And um, Joel's a cool dude. We've actually, we had dinner a couple weeks ago uh, yeah. back in Nashville where Joel lives. And uh, so we've been able to talk outside of, you know, the Twitter or Facebook, you know, real life talking. And I've twisted his arm to share some cool stuff with you guys. So take it away, man. Dude, thanks for thanks for having me. Really appreciate it. So uh, let's let's talk about the interview and what do we want to jump into first? I mean, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about blogging, some guest blogging. Um, that's the real. That's the main thing I want to talk about. It's not just everybody knows how to publish a, a blog on WordPress, but uh, so many people. Uh, don't what they don't really know is that you can publish the best content in the world but if no one else sees it it doesn't really matter and expecting people to come to your site out of however many billions of websites are out there is not a good strategy for getting more traffic converting customers uh, or building credibility online so you know uh, it doesn't matter how popular you are in your town or you know offline if uh, your website looks like a ghost town things aren't going to be happening for you so you, you've done this for best-selling authors, but this, uh, we're going to call it a framework, works for anyone. I mean, if you're just starting to blog. And maybe you can give us an example uh, of, you know, some of the typical roadblocks that people have that prevent them from blogging. And some, you know, give us some tips and frameworks that will help us to be able to implement. Yeah, definitely. So, um you're right. It does. It doesn't just work for authors, people who create content for a living. It it will work for anyone who wants to uh, build credibility online, get more exposure, uh, build inbound links, or just uh, widen their network online, build relationships. Uh, the more you're out there, the more opportunities uh, will come to you. You know. So some of the roadblocks that people have is there's a there's a huge mental roadblock in people's mind that. Um, reaching out to someone else is going, they're going to get shut down. You know, it's just a lot of people don't even know that uh, websites accept guest posts or want to do interviews with you. You know, uh, they don't have a clue that people are actually desperate for good quality content on their websites. Let's, so, what I do is let's back go up ahead and find out why are they desperate. So, if we can get into the mind of figuring that out, mm -hmm. um, it's kind of like, um, it's understanding what their problem is, right? And then instead of like, because I've noticed so many times, if you don't understand the problem, it's like this hard sell. Mm -hmm. And once you understand the problem, there's like no selling; it's just solving their problem. It's the education. Yeah. So what? Why is it that they actually would want a guest blogger? So it some sites want them, some sites don't, and it's really simple to find out if. Uh, if they do or if they don't, but why they would want one is uh, it's tough creating content on a consistent basis. You know, you know that I know that uh, I uh, it's it's super tough for me to keep to a consistent schedule. You know, blogging all the time. But uh, if you had amazing writers who would also maybe be great uh, partnerships down the future, uh, you know, people that you would want to network and stuff. If those people were knocking down your door to write killer posts that you could share with your audience. Um, I mean, a lot of people love that, you know, that's a, that's an incredible thing. So rather than me having to brute produce all of it, 
if someone else can come to my site and offer a post that's already written that I get to share exclusively uh, that is on the topics that I've chosen for my blog that I want to write that helps reflect my brand, then heck yeah, I'm going to do it, you know? What was your first guest post? Man, what was it? Um, I think... It was on a it was a it was on a super small uh, printing blog. Mm -hmm. It was uh, it was a, another business and just reached out to them and I thought I was going to get rejected and they snatched it right up. Were you scared to approach them? Heck yes, I was so scared. What like I what were you scared about? Pitch email over and over again and uh, the guy didn't take less than a day to respond back to me. But what was it that you were scared about? I mean, the rejection was first. Uh, the other thing, you know, you start thinking about, is this person going to, uh, like, look at these other places I am online and say, you know, try to call me out on something? Are they going to hate my, my content? Does my content suck, you know, and I just don't know it? You know, am I the only one who doesn't know it? Uh, that type of thing. So, they, you know, this guy on a printing site finally... <laughs> accepts you and says, yeah, let's do it. Mm -hmm. At that point, were you scared? Were you like, holy crap, I, I have to write something and this has to be good? Or like, what went through your mind? So there's two ways you can approach it. Uh, one, you can write it beforehand and then pitch it to people and you've already gotten it written. The other one is if you're not exactly sure what to write, you can pitch them a few topics and then when they say yes to one, you have a fire, fire under your butt and you are going to write it and pump it out no matter what. It's a great way to get motivated really quick. So I did the first one and I had already written it and sent it to him. I okay. sent him just a piece of it. And like how long was it? Were we talking? Um, we're talking about six, seven hundred words. Okay. It was like a seven tips to do this type thing. Okay, cool. Yeah. And, um, and so you were surprised. The guy's like, yeah, this is good. I want it. Yeah. And he loved it. He exactly. Yeah. I mean, and I was super surprised. And when he said yes, I was like, I, I mean, all the fear was gone. I was like, man, this is easy. Okay. You know? So what happened after that? So after that, uh, he published it. I, pr I promoted it like crazy and he wanted more from me. He was like, come back anytime. And uh, the crazy thing is almost, I mean, I would say 75% of, of the people that I guest post on and that uh, my clients guest post on want more posts. And so it's, it's incredible. They say, come back anytime, write for me, you know, whenever you want. Wow, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, so are there, what other benefits do you get outside of being able to post on someone's website and getting, you know, you get your SEO, like a link back or things like that. Yeah. Um, are there some hidden benefits that I wouldn't know about? Because I, I haven't done this. And so I'm just like wondering what mm -hmm. other hidden benefits there are. Yeah. So the first thing is you are like one of the best kept secrets of the internet marketing world, right? So if you were trying to build your brand more, um, and, and that's part of your, uh, that's part of your brand, you know? Mm -hmm. You are like a uh, internet marketing, hate to say ninja, but uh, but ninja, you know. But I, I I do wear a mask at night. I just <laughs> I have to disclose that. <laughs> uh, I really think you should uh, change your profile pic to you in a mask. But anyways, <laughs> um, exposure is a huge one. The more places that you show up, the more top of mind you will be to your audience and. That's why I think that stupid people get so successful. You know those people who you see making hundreds of thousands of dollars and you're like, who the heck is this clown? You know, this guy is an idiot. I could do that in my sleep. Yeah. Uh, I, I see him every single day, right? Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. But the number one reason why they do not do that is or why they are successful and you aren't is uh, you may have the good content but they're in more places than you are therefore they are getting the exposure you um, know what I'm saying I do actually and it's funny that you mentioned this because uh, recently I did a training mm -hmm. and one of the concepts of the training was to be I was teaching uh, the attendees to be dumb 
And they're like, what? And I, I'm like, really? Yes. Like, the more that we think about things, we usually screw it up. But it's that dumb guy. That guy that doesn't even ask. He's just like, okay, we'll just do it. And we're way smarter than him, but he's doing better because he just he does it. Implements it all the time. Okay. So let's so, get let's get into this is working for you. You've done these guest posts and people all of a sudden start to realize like, wow, this guy has, you know, some content. He's built a brand to himself. Where did you take it? Like where was that next level? Can I back up and just give you two more benefits? Yeah, okay, fine. Let's do it. All right. All right. I'm I'm sorry to throw you off. No, no, that's fine. Um but the other one or one of the other big big ones that people overlook that I would say you won't find this when you are trying to or you never think about this but when people google you what do they see you know a lot of times I mean I don't know about you but before I meet with anybody or take an appointment I always google the person right um, and I don't just look at their LinkedIn profile. I look at what is the first and second page. What comes up about them? If it's a, if it's on Google and it's just a, you know, here's maybe their Facebook profile, their LinkedIn profile, their Twitter, you know, all their social media profiles, with their website, whatever it is. It's just screaming me, 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 me. You are in charge. It's like having a bunch of testimonials written by yourself. You know, I'm not going to trust that. <laughs> so instead, what if it was? you on someone else's blog and you on someone else's blog here and you're a you're a featured author here and you're a featured writer here and it's all these other people with their votes of confidence on their site saying uh you know here's a post about spence here's a post about spence here you know here's a post that spence wrote on my site that goes a lot further uh for credibility seeing yourself on someone else's site right uh, especially for prospect or if you are looking this guy up. Um, and then the last one real quick is just finding or discovering audience segments that you might have overlooked. So for example, we were helping a B2B company, a boring B2B company, business to business, you know, uh, they never even touched consumers uh, with guest posting. And what we found was that the main people that were the main traffic that was coming to their site from those guest posts were people they weren't even targeting. And so we were able to kind of switch up their marketing strategy and uh, grab a new, uh, entirely new revenue stream and target them for their company. Hmm. So uh, it's a great discovery tool as well, tap into new audiences. Yeah, that sounds like it is. Um, is there certain thing with the pitch? Certain, you know, is there... Can you give me, and I hate using the word, I don't want to word, use the word like magic bullet, mm -hmm. but uh, is there a certain approach to take so that you're going to increase your likelihood of a person accepting the pitch? Definitely, definitely. Now, we can go out and find a hundred different ways to do this, you know, and all of them are going to be slightly tweaked, slightly different. They're going to have, you know, they're going to say, they're going to disagree on some things, but Here's the thing that they all have in common. First okay. off is you don't mass pitch people. You can use templates, but they need to be really, really customized. So the biggest thing with that is do your research. And when I say research, I mean really get to know that person. Take time and stalk them a little bit you know, beforehand. Uh, when I was getting to know you in order to make sure that I sound didn't sound like an idiot to you first starting out. I mean, I went back and checked out your YouTube channel, you checked out videos from years ago. There was one you were on a playground with some guy. That sounds really bad, but uh, you were shooting a video. Uh, just, I mean, it, it had to be five or six years ago, maybe. And uh, go through the Twitter stream, go through your blog and your website, the comments. How do people react? How do you react to other people? Uh, look at their content categories. What types of things are they writing about? The other not great way to warm it up, warm up a pitch is to start commenting. Maybe a month or two out, comment on their posts, you know, and start kind of building a relationship with them. And that way you're just not a random who, uh, you know, reaches out to them from out of nowhere. Um, the second thing is I really think 
people who try to include everything in that email pitch at the beginning, like I'm gonna save you some time and I'm gonna include every single little detail, mm -hmm. don't do that. Just get the yes. Make it short enough, short paragraphs, short email, right? So two or three sentences per paragraph. Bullet lists are great. Just get in there enough to tell that you are credible uh, so and enough so they know what you're talking about and then just get the yes, then send them the next email for with with all the details. Okay. Um, is there a way to approach big time bloggers or big time website like traffic heavy traffic websites mm -hmm. versus smaller traffic websites? Do you have to approach those differently? Um, with the big ones, the biggest thing to do, you need to do is if they accept guest posts, they are going to have a guest post guidelines. Okay. And uh, one of one I show a bunch of Google search hacks how you can find those. You know, just super super quick and super easy by searching Google uh, inside their site. Um, these are these are things when you do them for an hour, Google will pop up and freeze your searches and say, are you a computer or are you a person? Because the stuff you're doing is so advanced, it looks like you're a robot. Okay. Um, so it's, it's good stuff. Um, but it won't freeze it. You know, you can just click OK and, and be on with your way. But So you're going beyond like site colon, you know, site colon, website name. You're like actually doing some pretty advanced stuff. There's there's a lot of other stuff beyond site colon. That's one of the basic ones I teach, but mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of other things in that. Yeah. Okay. For wow. sure. A lot of other variations. So it, I have two. And ahead. I would assume that if you let the people know in your pitch email, hey, I understand your guidelines, that mm -hmm. you're lowering their barrier of resistance. Mm hmm. Okay. That is exactly right. You follow them to a T and show that. Um, that you see exactly what they're talking about and if you do that and you provide all the stuff that they want you will be right up there and be considered with anybody else I had a client who um, we just got him on ProBlogger and they followed it to a T had no trouble at all getting featured uh, and it was early on in their guest posting so they didn't have a ton of credibility you know wow that's pretty you know, that's pretty neat so you're you're like doing a piggybacking technique while you're still helping. Um, do you want to jump in and talk about content creation and how you would do that? Or is there something else you'd like to jump to first? No, I mean, we can talk about content creation. Um, that, to me, with every single like um, piece of marketing that you do or business, there's bottlenecks. Mm -hmm. And... You know, there's bottlenecks in several different areas, and so like if you're not a tech person, usually your bottleneck is going to be tech. Um, if you're not okay. a like an incredible writer, you're going to have a bottleneck with content creation. Mm -hmm. And you know, I'll use myself as an example. I I love to speak and do video, but it's really hard to like do the bottleneck of like typing out on the computer and taking that time. So. How would a person overcome those bottlenecks to create incredible content? Awesome, awesome question. So there are so many bottlenecks, and there's and if we're not careful, they can turn into excuses, right? Uh, yeah. You you love video, but you hate getting it, you know, transcribed and stuff. But you found a way to overcome it, right? Mm -hmm. You sub that stuff out. Um, turn off the phone there but so that is one of the big things is figure out what the weakness is and how to overcome it so one of my big bottlenecks for content creation is I hate the writing process too so whoa, whoa. so you're teaching how to do blogging and you're a guest blogger but you hate writing it I hate the writing process it is a it's a struggle but I found a way to enjoy it but yeah that's exactly right that's kinda of my dirty secret is uh, uh, I hate the traditional writing process, sitting oh. down, blank page, and starting from scratch. What is it that you hate? Like, does your does like do you have this blank page and you're just like, dude, I don't even know where to start? Mm -hmm. Or like, tell me what's going on, because I that's really interesting that you have become an expert with this, yet like you're 
exposing this dirty little secret. Yeah, yourself. it's like the it's like there is a the communication between my fingers and my brain is severed. You know, at my at my elbow, it's uh, I just I can talk all day about a subject, but when I start yeah getting down to it, uh, trying to write it out, I overthink the crap out of it, and I just freaking I I. I, you know, you write out a paragraph, you delete it, you write out another one, it sucks. So, hey, so how do you overcome that? What have you done? There's a little app. Okay. And all it is is Dragon. Dragon yeah. Dictation. Yeah. Okay. So this app right here, um, I, I, I got the software. It's a couple hundred bucks, totally worth it. You teach it to know your style, but instead of writing it out on your computer, there's a great little app that you can get for your iPhone that you can just record your voice and you don't, it's not being transcribed in real time. And then all you do is upload it wirelessly. You upload it through Bluetooth to your computer and it just transcribes the entire thing. So I literally write blog posts driving down the highway in my car. So I just hit this app that I have. That's not the one. That is like it, but that's not the one. It, you have to have the software to have okay. this one. So, uh, and here's the difference between it. When you are using that app and it is transcribed in real time, you're going to look at your words and you're going to say, crap, it, it you know, mis, mis, uh, misspelled this one word or it didn't catch what I was saying. And you start overthinking it like crazy, right? Mm-hmm compared to where you are recording this video right now, we're not overthinking when I said, um, a couple times five minutes ago, we can't see that and it's not a distraction. So the goal is if you don't want to spend a couple hundred bucks, just record it on something like Audacity and then play it back and make an outline of your notes. But this transcribes the entire thing, then I just go through and edit it. Wow. And okay. so whenever I'm in the car and I have an idea, I just hit record and you know, throw the phone up and just start talking to it. You know, it doesn't matter if there's a bunch of mess ups or whatever. I just do all the editing when I'm finished. That's a pretty big tip. Um, do you have any other tips like that that help you create content? Um, man, a if here's a here's a huge one that I always start with, especially for I business. Can tell it's good. Because you, you, uh, here's the thing, whenever you ask a person a question and they go like that, I'm like, okay, this is gonna be good. <laughs> <laughs> um, it seems so simple, but it is so overlooked. Glue a pen and pad by your phone. I don't care if it's a if you use pen and pad, whatever you use. If you use Google Docs, if you use Evernote, if you use Word, I don't care. But every time anything ends with a question mark. Any question that you get from a prospect, a conversation, a networking, a phone call, whatever, throw that in there. Stop the person and write that down. And you will have more content after one week that you can prove to yourself that people actually want this than you'll have in a year of just trying to come up with stuff off, off the top of your head. And here's why this is so good. Um, if, if you are asking people those questions and real people, real clients, real prospects are giving you those answers, the toughest part is when you sit down to write that content, the doubt starts creeping in and, and you start thinking, is this any good? Is anybody going to read this? Right? Well, having uh, content that comes straight out of your target audience's mouth is enough to overcome that fear a lot of times and say, well, I'm writing it for so-and-so. Why don't I just talk like I'm talking to them? And what you're unknowingly doing is talking like you're talking to your target audience because those are the people who really want to know. They, they're their questions and you are talking like you would to them and creating awesome content at the same time. So FAQs are huge. Don't just put them in an FAQs page. You can do the who, what, why, where, how, you know, when you are when you get that question and uh, uh, it's it's incredible the type of content that you can create just from one question okay so I I heard Tim Ferriss from the four-hour work week mm -hmm. um, I, I saw an interview with him and he said that he went through 
all of the blog posts that he's written, and he's mm-hmm. written a lot for several years. And he said that he found that the post that he was most interested about, like personally interested about, right, did the best versus the ones that you know maybe would have good search results or that someone else wanted to write. What's your opinion on that? Versus going off of what you really want to write versus having to fulfill, uh, you know, the order of that someone's yeah. topic or something like that. The art versus the science, right? Uh huh. Um, man, that's a that's a huge question. I uh, the there is there's both sides to it, and you have to figure out what it looks like for you. You know, a lot of people try to lean b- both ways, but you know, lean uh, one way or the other, but uh, that is the, the truth is if you, you can't write a great post if you aren't interested in it. So my advice is don't fight it. If you aren't interested in what you're writing, put it to the side and save it for later or manufacture some inspiration. Start reading other posts about that topic and get fired up about it, you know, have a conversation with a friend about it to get you, you know, what got you interested uh, in the first place about it. But um, the truth is, is if you are going to blog for your business, it's got to move beyond a hobby. So you've got to move beyond the art and you've got to do things, you know, in a, uh, in a scheduled way. So you've got to, you do have to pump stuff out even when you don't want to. And I think that there's an art to that as well, you know? Can you give me something actionable that a person could do to be able to pump out content when... <laughs> their brain says no and their hands say no mm-hmm. and they use the i've used the excuse of i'm just not inspired or i just can't think of something mm-hmm. or i don't have an idea can you give us an actionable step that a person could take to move from not doing to doing definitely um first off uh here's here's a couple actionable steps number one don't do it uh <laughs> just uh give up and be a loser like everyone else who doesn't do it you know but if you really don't want to be a loser if you really want to and you've committed to it then uh there's so many different ways that you can come up with these different things so one that i use it's one of the only pdfs that i keep on my desktop and it's called headline hacks and i believe john morrow wrote it i can i can include a link to it yeah i think it's like 43 headline hacks right yeah I yeah, use that I thing all the time. That's another kind of secret of mine. Uh, and just coming up with, just looking at his different headline ideas gives me, I, do, I have five content categories, I call them, uh, that I write about. Things like marketing, productivity, uh, content, local stuff, and uh, uh, some social marketing, right? Uh, strategy. And I just take each of those categories and apply them and fill in the blanks in these headline hacks. And uh, um, before I know it, I have tons of different ideas. The other thing I uh, I would recommend is uh, looking through your past comments. What are people asking you about that you could write about? Um, looking at your most popular posts. I just published a blog post, uh, for a guest post for someone else that was like, uh, 17 blog post ideas. I look at those all the time too. Just type in blog post ideas and you'll come up with a, a ton of them. Uh, Google, if you're more analytical, I love looking at things like Google Trends or uh, uh, Google Insights for Search. Uh, type in the industry that you're in and it'll give you the trending topics and a bunch of ideas that you can come up with uh, to write about. Now, when you're writing, what do you do to make your content stick out? Because I mean, I think th- there must be at least like a million articles about the ten steps or seven secrets or yeah. Those. yeah. So, yeah. what can you do to to really break out to like make your article, your content mm-hmm. really be something different? Or do you need to do that? No, you definitely need to, and it, def- it it starts with what you said, that first step of you've got to love what you're writing about. You've got to be convinced that you are writing about it. So the first thing to remember is... Uh, is that energy drink? It is. Is that a monster? 
It's tea. Oh, really? Yeah, so I don't feel as bad drinking it. It's oh. uh, it's called Rehab, which is a terrible name, but it's green tea. And it's really good, actually. The other stuff, to me, tastes like piss, but this is really good stuff. It, dude, that stuff tastes like battery acid. When it you it does, it. but this is not carbonated and doesn't have any sugar or calories or whatever. Uh, and I like it better than coffee in the morning sometimes. There you go. So, so I, I, I don't have ADD at all, I swear. Okay, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay, um, so you were going to share with us. Um, yes. All right. The... Um, do you need to how do you create something that's actually unique but so what you've got to realize is that there is nothing new under the sun right <laughs> so when I look at the worst thing that you can do when you're writing a post is if I'm wanting to write a post I wrote a post you know my last guest post I think was about the um, 17 ideas for uh, business bloggers to come up with ideas right the worst thing that you can do is type in and think okay so what are other people writing about this because when you see that hundreds of posts with blog ideas will pop up right so the worst mistake you can make is saying crap someone already covered this I'm you know on to the next thing mm -hmm. well but the the bad news is someone has already covered every single thing you can think of the good news is is that does not matter at all. What really matters is that uh, people want to hear, it's the why. People want to hear from you and what you have to say about it, your take on it, why you think, uh, your angle on it, not the what, what it is, it's the, it's the why and the who, who it's from, right? So mm -hmm. the way that I describe something, the way that you describe something is going to be completely different. We could write about the same thing and have completely different posts that draw in completely different people and help different people. So, I mean, put that on the side of your computer on a sticky note. It's the who. It's people want to hear from me. It's not all about the the uh, content. That's what makes good sticky content. What's the hardest thing you've ever written? Like, what was the, the assignment, the task? Man. That just that just raked you over the coals. There was a guest post that I did a little while back, and uh, a challenge from one of my uh, business coaches. He was telling me put more personality and more personal stories into your post, right? And uh, a lot of times I would just write about the principles and the strategy, and I, I don't get very personal. But he said build more personal examples. So I wrote a post about some things that I had never shared before. Uh, and it was three big points uh, with a personal, you know, kind of story to demonstrate each one. And boy, that took me way longer than it should have. It was for a, it was for a big blog, and uh, it was, it, I really hesitated with it, you know. But is it because you felt vulnerable or what? Yeah, that I felt vulnerable. I wasn't used to talking and and giving those kind of details out, you know. And uh, but it ended up being one of my most popular posts, and I've got several interviews from that, and uh, opportunities came from that like crazy. I mean, in the first hour of publishing, people reached out to me and uh, wanted to do interviews and stuff because they loved it so much. And so, That's what I really discovered, yeah, is don't be afraid to share those kind of details because they're what help people the most. Now, what's your biggest regret with blogging, guest blogging and blogging that you've done? Man, biggest regret. Probably that I haven't done even more of it. Oh, I've that, been doing it. dude, that's vanilla. The vanilla. I'm not going to let you skate on that one. What What kind of regrets are you looking for? Uh, like, dude, I, I, wrote, out, I wrote this art. I, I made this pitch, and I was so off on the pitch, or I wrote this article, and, you know, like, I... You know, I can tell you so many regrets that I have. I, yeah, I'll tell yeah. you one. I wrote an email to um, my one of my uh, MMA lists, my mixed mm -hmm. martial artists, mm -hmm. and I'm like trying to be more edgy. And so I wrote this subject line, uh, "The Death of Wussies," and dude, I had never had that many unsubscribes in my life, and people like unsubscribed and spammed and like. You know, Ooh. I was trying to be edgy, but I wasn't myself edgy. Ah, gotcha, gotcha. Man, 
I think, I mean, one of the things I do regret, I mean, I haven't, it's going, going big right out of the gate. A lot of times going for opportunities that you know that you'll, you can get and not even going even bigger and really hitting those limits. One of the things that I've been experimenting with lately is just going way bigger, way faster. Uh, it's just there's no reason why not. The worst Ooh. that people can say is no, you know. Okay. And so when I was starting off, I I went for the low hanging fruit and just just uh, it was it was almost too easy, you know. That's a really good point. So um, maybe playing ball in a small area for too long mm -hmm. when you had the That's skill terrible. and you could have maybe even done the big sites from the very beginning the big sites a lot of the big sites I found were just as easy as the small ones so you know I've got a post on it one with a, a blog with 5,000 monthly readers that's great but what about the one with you know 200 300,000 monthly readers right yeah. Or half a million or a million, you know, a lot of them, these couple, these sites with a couple hundred thousand are just as desperate for good content. So what's to, what's to think that my post couldn't, the same post could get published on one of those, okay. you know? So that's a, that's a pretty interesting take. So you're saying that a person could, you know, start a lot bigger than they even assume. Mm -hmm. and I think starting small is good just to get over that initial fear of rejection. Or maybe understanding like the process of like, here's yep. how I do the pitch, mm -hmm. uh, here's how I interact with the person, mm -hmm. here's how I follow up, here's how I nurture the relationship. That's exactly right. Um, but, and you've actually, you've been doing this for years and you've created a, a framework, like an entire system. Mm -hmm. um, and I've actually gone on your Udemy channel and taken a look at it. and. It's fantastic. It, it really is well put together. Awesome. I appreciate um, it. And I read your uh, customer t you know, reviews, the testimonials. Again, I, I did my homework as well. So, you did. Um, Impressed. You have, I mean, you've got five-star reviews. People speak very highly of you. Um, so tell me, why did you create a course like that? Um, you know, there's three ways you can do anything. You can... Uh, do it for somebody, you can do it with somebody, or you can teach someone to do it by giving them the manual, right? Mm -hmm. And what I found is if you do, if you help somebody and you do guest blogging for them, or even with them, a lot of times most of that responsibility gets put onto you and they never really take complete control of it. The best people that, the most successful people that I have helped is when I've taught them the process and um, they then do it themselves, they take ownership of it, and they just rock it, right? Mm -hmm. So I don't make near as much money, but the results are absolutely incredible, and that is, that's huge for me. I want results just like anybody else does. So that has been, that is the biggest reason why I created this is there's been a lot of people that come up and they say, Joel, I want to do this myself, you know, and I say, well, I don't really want to spend a week teaching you, and I just finally took the time to compile all the things I mean I've do, I've pitched hundreds if not thousands of different bloggers uh, on for me and on behalf of you know different clients from you know New York Times best-selling authors to uh, you know self-publishing authors to boring B2B companies I mean all over the place and just took everything that I've experienced with this uh, from me doing it myself to me managing teams doing this and uh, put it all together, and uh, it took forever, but it was definitely worth it. Yeah, it's it's really solid stuff. So tell me this: who should who is your customer that you actually work with as a consultant? Um, tell me who that person is and how they would get in touch with you, and then tell me who should check out your course and how they should check it out. Definitely. So my customer that I do consulting with are really they are action takers and they're okay. people that know enough to they may have a business it doesn't really matter what kind it is it's uh, they a lot of times they have a super small marketing department with someone who can kinda champion this stuff if it's a solopreneur it's uh, the course is best for them but it's tough when 
you are we wearing a million different hats and I'm adding another one on to you, you know? But if you have someone that can kind of champion this and we can teach them how to do that, that is my core con uh, consulting uh, customer. Okay. And so, so an existing business, mm -hmm. uh, is it an author or is it just someone that has to create content? It can be an author, but it's really, it's much bigger than that. It's anyone that has to create content. It's, yeah, I may be successful offline, but I want stuff happening online as well. I want stuff happening 24 seven, not just when I'm out and about, you know, uh, meeting people. Okay. So it's, I want to attract people to my website and accomplish uh, a specific goal. How uh, which they, I, that's the first uh, segment that I talk about is accomplishing, you know, why are you doing this and uh, go yeah, ahead, I'm sorry. Now I was going to say, how would they get in touch with you if someone felt like they wanted, um, you know, to get consulting, like mm -hmm. to have, have you do it for them or just work shoot with me, their team? Yeah, just shoot me an email. Okay. Uh, we can put my email address right there, uh, contact form. Do you want to, uh, do you want to throw your email on the video? Are you okay with that? Yeah, definitely. It's uh, just Joel at FluxDigitalMarketing.com, and that is uh, F L U X E Digital Marketing. Okay. Dot com. J O E L. All right, perfect. And so, who is the person that would benefit from your course? Tell me that customer. Uh, those are people like uh, self-publishing authors, uh, small businesses, anyone who knows I have the drive to do this. It. I mean, it's literally only takes an hour a day for six days. Okay. It's not a huge commitment. I did it very intentionally. I gave you everything short of holding your hand, you know. Uh, I created an autoresponder, an email that you get every day that'll, all you have to do is click on the link and watch and do five or ten minutes of homework. Okay. You know. And what does a person, like what would a person expect um, to, you know, kind of results? And obviously like results are based on the effort that you put in mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. what should they expect man uh, they can expect to have a guest post at the end of that week at least send one out that they can be proud of you okay. know that's um, cool yeah i mean i don't i can't guarantee how quickly the person the blogger will respond to you but i can guarantee that uh it doesn't even matter if you have a website or not. Just just for the sake of having good search results pop up, you know, when you come up, but that you will have uh, been able to find awesome opportunities for guest blogging. That you will have been able to reach out to that person without looking like an idiot. That you'll be able to have created an awesome post for them and promoted the heck out of it uh, to get your current audience and their audience to read it. Um, and and use that for whatever goal you are trying to accomplish. That's pretty cool. Um, so you and I talked before the video, mm -hmm. and you actually have a a fifty percent off coupon code. So we'll put that in the description. Yeah, um, definitely. It's probably going to be a URL that's like mm -hmm. super long. Um, but Je you know, Joel's been cool enough to set that up for our listeners, and that'll go out on our website and our YouTube channel, and it, you know. You and I right now, we're doing like the guest posting, in in essence, on the video scale because that's uh, that's exactly right. Yeah, I mean, when we uh, ate at what was that restaurant called? Sopapillas. Sopapillas. Sopa yeah. So uh, good. It was really good. Um, so we're you know talking and Joel's explaining uh, the different things that he does and how he helps people create content. I thought you know this is this is something that my audience needs to hear and uh, so I you know I hope that they're able to be introduced to you and then uh, you know check out the content you have and it's it's really really good stuff man uh, I really appreciate you having me definitely man now is there any any other uh, little insights uh, any other things that you'd like to share while we're uh, before we part man um, if I if anyone has a question or anything, I would be more than hand, uh, more than happy to answer. Do you have uh, comments below? Yeah, this that, will be uh, on, below uh, the video that are going to be open that mm -hmm. people can ask. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. So we can. I would be more than happy to answer. Uh, pretty much. I don't. I can't think of anything that would be off limits. Uh, but 
I'm happy to give away anything or answer any questions for anybody. Uh, just ask or shoot me an email that if you have any questions at all, I'd be happy to do that and uh, take some time to do that for your, for your uh, audience as well. That'd be cool. All right. Well, um, check out Joel uh, and hopefully they can also follow you on Twitter. Yeah, uh, just Jay Wood. put Whit some cool stuff on there. You want to throw that one more time? It's uh, Jay Widmer. So it's J-W-I-D-M-E-R at Jay Widmer. Okay. And uh, so everyone, uh, check out Joel's uh, incredible content. Follow him on Twitter and comment below. And as he said, he will uh, be in touch with you guys answering your questions. And he knows this stuff. I mean, he's helped best-selling authors and the small mom and pops. And so he understands the bottlenecks that we have that I have, um, you know, to really grow our businesses the way that we should. So, hey, I appreciate you taking the time out of your day. To have Dude, Spence, meeting. thank you. Yeah, Thanks, this has been awesome. awesome. Take it easy. Take care.